Viral. Deshaun Jackson has returned to the Philadelphia Eagles where he kicked off his NFL career and he's giving back to the community. Check out Deshaun giving food to some homeless people in North Philly. Really nice thing to see. Awesome gesture by NFL player on a Friday night. I know we're here in New York City. Man, a lot of people out there in this world really hurting. He decides to take the time and I'm glad that he videotaped it so younger players can see, man. When you have that type of visibility, there's so many changes that you can make, so many positive things that you can do. Man, I love Philadelphia. Spent good time there. It's nice to see that players like Deshaun going out. He's matured just so much since his first day. During the day, he had done his youth football camp, helping yep. kids out, and then at night does that. That's really, really great. Really awesome. I'm glad we got to see it. Eagles fans happy to have Deshaun Jackson back in town. Time now for some stories to start your morning. Sponsored by Gillette Clear Gel. Kawhi Leonard has dominated the finals thus far, and the quest to woo him has begun. According to reports, the Knicks are confident they'll get a meeting with Kawhi in the hopes of convincing him to come to New York. See you buying that Kawhi could end up here? Oh, absolutely. Oh, they will definitely have a meeting with them. And I believe that the Knicks, they have a presentation that they're going to present to him just like they do. And they've spent a lot of time and money to try to, if Kawhi is going to stay outside of California, why wouldn't he come to New York City compared to staying in Toronto? So I do believe that they do have a the, the, the probability is high. It's higher than people think. Okay, so I think the Knicks have a better chance than every team in the league except for the Clippers and the Raptors, but I still don't think it's that high of a probability. I, for me, I would go 50% Clippers, 40% Raptors, 10% Knicks as we see. Let me tell you today. what those other teams don't provide. Kevin Durant. He won't be with the Clippers. He won't be with Toronto. What if Kawhi and KD decide to pair up? Like, I think KD would go for that. All right, speaking of KD, Kevin Durant practiced yesterday. He's now listed as questionable tonight in Toronto. Question is, how effective will he be? Nick Wright, is Kevin Durant's return the only chance the Warriors have at this point? It's the start of every chance they have. Any chance they have starts with Kevin Durant playing tonight. And it's almost impossible, but it's very simple. KD comes back tonight, you use that energy to get a win. You're then back at home. Game six, you're not going to lose the last game ever at Oracle, right? And now all of a sudden it's a game seven with a chance for everyone on the Warriors to see what they always wanted. For the Warriors, you avenge the your 3-1 loss. For KD, oh, you never needed me? Well, you won two titles with me. You were down 3-1 in the finals till I came back, then reeled off three straight victories. Now, I think that's about a 1-15 in 15 chance of all those things happening, but it has to start with KD playing tonight. Jen, I do believe they can win game number five without KD. I don't believe they can win the series without KD being at 100%. And now that Toronto has three wins, man, this series is a matter before which day the parade's going to be. All right, they got two games at home. They also have a game plan. This is not like Toronto is on this unbelievable shooting streak. Oh, they're shooting 45% from three. Oh, they're shooting 52% from the field. No, they're struggling shooting the basketball in certain games, and they're still better than the Warriors. All right, finally, with KD questionable for tonight and Klay Thompson working his way back from injury, the brunt of the work falls to Steph Curry. He was lights out in game three, but lights on in game four, if that's a thing. He scored 27 points on 22 shots and looked exhausted for much of the game. Warriors on the brink of elimination tonight. Nick, what do they need from Steph if they're going to win this game? Uh, about 35 points, eight rebounds, seven assists. Need him to go on the type of run he was on from the moment KD got hurt up until they ran into the Toronto Raptors over that five-game stretch. Like, what do they need from Steph? What Steph has shown the ability, even though he is more prone to having a really off night in the NBA Finals or NBA Playoffs, I should say, than just about any of our other great, truly great players. He also, they... Game five, their first championship year, he goes for 37-17 in the fourth quarter, critical game in that series. Game five, game six this year against Houston, critical game, goes for 33 in the second half of that game. We know that Steph has it, and we saw him 47 points in a loss of, in game number three, and it, you're spot on, Jen, in that it looked like those minutes, that workload in game three was having its effects just less than 48 hours later when they played game four. But they're going to need Steph to be spectacular because even if they get Durant, I do agree with Chris in this regard, he's obviously not going to be 100%. The lion's share of the workload offensively is going to have to once again fall in the Golden State backcourt. So they need Steph and Clay to combine right. 
something like 65 points if they're going to crack this Raptors nut, and that's going to be very difficult, but it's what they need. The thing I don't like about that type of analysis that people just think that all of a sudden Draymond and Iggy and Looney, like they're going to be able to hit shots. This is not about Steph. It's not about Clay. So if what, what they need from Steph, Steph needs to get the other guys involved to be able to generate some confidence in them that eventually, because they're going to get an open shot and they're going to have to be able to make it. We know Clay can score. We've seen that. He came back in game four and was outstanding with 28. We saw Steph dominate game number three, but it still didn't give confidence to the other players. If the other players don't have confidence, they're not going to win this game. So how's he going to do that? Get them involved early. Be more of a playmaker. Be more of a distributor from the beginning. Run some sets for them so they have some confidence because they know they can get their shot. Clay knows he can get hot. Steph knows he can get hot. And try to play at an up tempo where they can't get their defense set. That's what I believe should be the recipe for Golden State to try to get back into the series. Steph shouldn't try to find his game. Steph has his, his game. It's the other players, and if they can't score, it puts so much pressure on Steph and on Clay. Clay because when you get to the critical juncture of the game, are you going to pass the ball? No. And that's what we've seen the other players. When KD got hurt, Steph was nice, but guess what Draymond did? Draymond was dominant. We haven't seen Draymond be that way, especially on the offensive end. So I believe that the others in trying to put positive energy into them because they have not been good, even though Steph has been good and Clay has been good. So I believe even if they're good together, it's not enough to get through Toronto. But so I agree with you that in order to win this game in Toronto, assuming that KD, if he plays, is going to be a compromised version of himself, everyone has to play well, something they haven't been able to do in this series. You 16 quarters Raptors have won how many of them 13 see? 13 but do you on Steph Curry do you think no matter how well the other guys play there is a, a realistic path to victory for the Warriors that doesn't involve Steph scoring at least 30 because I don't I think well, that's I the mean they only 30 is it, 30 in the NBA game for a superstar that's what we expect they're challenged offensively. Who else is going to score for them? Right. Well, that's, I mean, I, to me, that's the exact point I'm making. But you can is. get 30 by not being aggressive early. All right? Like, if they don't have any confidence, that doesn't help the Warriors. If Steph scores 15 in the first quarter, you think that helps the Warriors out more so than if Draymond had eight, Iggy had six, Looney had six? No, I, I understand that, but I think one is far more realistic than the other. Draymond's shooting 18% from three this series. Iggy is shooting 23% from three this series. I don't think so. All the conversation is how does Golden State win? Let's move Steph out of it. How do they win? The others must play well. Because Steph can play well and they still lose. Steph can play well and they still lose, but Steph cannot play poorly and have them win. Like, the, well, the, he played poorly and gave you 27 in the last game. Yes. And, and they lost. And they, the, hold on. This is, this is not complicated. If Steph doesn't play well, they're drawing dead. If Steph plays well, they can still lose. But the first thing that has to happen for Golden State tonight is Steph has to be sensational. Like that's and that's not too much of an ask. Yeah, I disagree with you. I disagree. I believe he needs to defer to the other players. Now you need to be sensational so we don't come down on you and criticize you. But the best game plan is for him. Let the game come to him. Get these other guys involved. Early. Toronto will not be expecting that. Play off the break. Play at accelerated pace. Get these other guys. Defer to them. Because we know Steph can get hot at any time. I believe that's how they win the game compared to what does Steph need to do tonight. If Steph needs to do something, be a playmaker early. All right? And then hunt your shot later on. All right. Let's leave it there. Coming up. Why are a couple of the Warriors players growing frustrated with Kevin Durant? We'll talk about that next on First Things First.